Hi friends, welcome back to SQL with Ravi Martha. This is SQL Server interview question and answer series. Today we'll see what is union and union all and what are the differences between union and union all. We'll also see a couple of interesting questions on union and union all. This is part 16 of this video series. So let's dive into today's session. So union Union basically combines result set of two or more select statements and the select statement should have same number of columns for union operation. If there are different number of columns in the select statements, it will throw an error. The next one is the columns of the select statement should have the same data type. So if it is of different data type, the SQL server will try to convert to a compatible data type. If it is compatible, then it will perform the union operation, else it will throw an error saying that the schema is incompatible. Union will remove duplicate records between the select statements and it will return only the distinct records. So A union B nothing but A plus B plus it will also remove the duplicate elements and it will give the re distinct records across A and B tables. Here we have table A which is having 1, 2 and 3 records, right? ID is 1, 2 and 3 and there is one more table B which is having the ID 3 and 4 and we are trying to perform a union operation between these two tables. When we perform that we get result 1, 2 and 3, 4. So here the 3 have been repeated twice both in table A and table B and we have so it has removed the duplicate records and returned the distinct records. So that's how the union works. Union also will sort the data. Now let's see what is union all. Next one is union all. So union all also combines result set of two or more select statements. Select statements should have same number of columns for union all operation. Union all will not eliminate duplicate records. All records will be returned from all the select statements. So A union B nothing but A plus B. So here we have a table A which is having 1, 2 and 3 records. So ID 1, 2 and 3 and we are trying to perform a union all operation with table B which is having ID 3 and 4. So in this case it is union all operation. So in this case we will get 1, 2, 3 and 3 and 4. So basically we have here we are not removing any duplicate records right. So this is simply A plus B. Also union all will not sort the data. So let's see the performance aspects of union and union all. So the performance wise, so union will do a distinct sort operation. So it will have a performance hit since it is sorting and doing the distinct operation. Union all perform better than union. So if you have two tables which are having larger data sets, right? So the union will not perform better. Here you can see the execution plan where it says distinct sort operation which is a costly operation data type is incompatible right so this is the error which will be thrown if the data type is different for the select statements let's see the questions for the union and union all the first one the table is having id 1 2 3 and 3 and 4 so let's see what is the output of these two queries right and the question number two is what is the output of the below data sets so here we have table which is having six seven eight nine and one in this case we have eight two six five four and three what is the output of union and union all and the next one is we have two data sets that is 987776 and the other data set is 
9 and 6. What is the output of the about data sets? So let's look at in action uh, for all those examples. So first we have seen this example where we have ID 1, 2, 3 and 3 and 4 in the other data set. Let's create these two tables employ ID 1 and 2 and let's perform the union operation. So let's run it. So it has removed the duplicate record that is 3 and it has given distinct set of records between the table A and table B that is employee D1 and 2. Let's run the union all also together. Distinct records here whereas whereas the union all given the all records from result set 1 and 2. Let's go ahead and see the next example which is when the schema is not compatible it will throw an error. So here in this case I am creating a table employee TBL employee underscore 3 and inserting two rows which is of data type date and in the previous example I have created employee 2 which is of int data type. Let's see what happens if we perform union operation with date and int data type. Let's run this. So it has given the same error which we have seen on the slide. So it says the data type is incompatible, right? It gives a similar error for the union all as well. So let's see that. So it has given the similar error for the union all as well, right? Next we'll see, we'll create a table table employee and score four. We'll create an ID with varchar data type and we'll insert only the numerical data type. We have created table employee underscore 4. So the employee ID underscore 4 is having varchar data type with numeric data and the employee 2 is having ID int data type. So if you perform this union operation, right, so we'll get 3 and 4 because the employee ID 4 is having record 3 and 4 and employee ID 2 is also having 3 and 4. When we perform the union operation, it will give the distinct records from the two sets, right? What happens if we perform the union all operation? It just gives the records of both the tables without removing any duplicates. Uh, what SQL Server has done is that it has tried to convert the varchar to int data type. It has done the implicit conversion. Since there are only numeric data in this table, it has done the conversion and it has performed the op union operation or the union all operation. Let's add one text data type and we'll see text record. So let's say this is test. Now let's perform the similar union operation. So it says the converting varchar value test to int is failed. So that means here the implicit conversion failed. Previously we have only the numeric data in this table. Now when we have entered the some text column, so the implicit conversion has failed and it has thrown an error. So this is how the implicit conversion happens. Let's see the question number two, creating two tables that is employee ID five and employee ID six. Let's create it. Right, let's see we have element 6, 7, 8, 9 and 1 and the other table is having 8, 2, 6, 5, 4 and 3. Let's run the union. So what it will do, it has done two things here. The first one, it has sorted the data, right? So the 1 has come first, even though we have records inserted from 6 and 8, it has sorted the data. The second thing it has done is that it has removed the duplicates. That is, we have 8, 6 in common between these two and it has removed that duplicate entries and given the distinct records. Let's see the union all operation for these two. Here it has not done any sorting as well as it has the duplicates. That is, 6 is there here as well as here. And 8 is there here and here. So it just the it has written all the records from both the tables. Let's see the third example. What happens if the one of the table is having duplicates? So here the 7 repeated thrice, and in this case the 8 
repeated thrice. Let's create the two tables employed 7 and 8. Now let's see the union operation. So even though the first table is having duplicates, still it will combine those two tables and remove the duplicates and it will sort the data. If you see the data has been sorted here. Right, let's see the union operation. Yeah, it has given all the records from both the tables. Let's also enable the execution plan. That is the actual execution plan. I have enabled it now. Let's execute this again. So the union all operation, when you go to the execution, so it says the select statement and then the sort operation, that is distinct sort operation has been performed here, which is costing 63%, right? So that's why the union is more costly operation when compared to the union all. I hope you like this video and if you like it, subscribe to my channel. Thank you very much. Have a great day. Thank you for tuning to my channel.